If you're up for adventure, then we've got a guide for you. Derek will be taking you from the very top to the very bottom of the world for some awesome tales of adventure. Hey, it's me, Derek, action figure. <laughs> Our first video is a fictional adventure based on one of the most popular books of its time, The Call of the Wild by Jack London. For more than a hundred years, millions of people have read this classic story about a dog named Buck and his adventures in some of the harshest places in the world. It makes me think, what is our responsibility to animals? If you think a dog's life isn't exciting, take a look at this. <laughs> The Call of the Wild. For four years, Buck had all the privileges of a prized family pet. He was treated well and had the run of a big estate in sunny California. But in one day, all that changed. Buck was stolen and sold to strangers. was thrown into a bolted crate and loaded onto a train, traveling for days without food or water. He became an angry, raging beast. When his crate was finally open, he leapt at his captors with 140 pounds of fury, but the shock of a club sent him to the ground with a pain he had never known before. Soon he was on a ship, and with each day, he could feel it getting colder and colder. Of course, Buck couldn't have known, but he was on his way to Alaska, where gold had been discovered. Animals were needed to pull sleds up there, and dogs were bought and sold by the thousands. In Alaska, his new owner put a harness on him, like the ones he saw on horses back home. Now, he was a working animal. The North was harsh and the other dogs were wild and savage. Buck had to learn to survive. At night, he burrowed under the snow for a warm place to sleep. He stole food when he was hungry and he challenged any dog who threatened him, including Spitz, the leader of the team. The two dogs became fierce rivals and they fought for the top position in the pack until one vicious battle left Spitz dead and Buck, the new leader of the team, Buck grew stronger and stronger each day, leading his team through thousands of miles of wilderness. His reputation as a sled dog grew, but he was worked nearly to death. Finally, he could go no further. A gold prospector named John Thornton came to Buck's rescue. Thornton understood dogs, and Buck learned to love and trust him. With Buck's help, Thornton found a lost gold mine and spent long days gathering his fortune. Buck began to go off on his own, hunting for food and roaming through the forest. More and more, he was becoming an animal of the wild, like his ancestors. When he returned to camp one day, Buck saw something that was almost too painful to bear. His beloved friend Thornton had been murdered. Full of grief and rage, Buck took his revenge on the killers. With Thornton gone, Buck left the life of humans and joined the wolves in the forest. He had been hearing the call of the wild since he came up north, and now he was ready to answer it. As the years passed, Buck became a legend to the native tribes. They call him Ghost Dog, and they say he returns once a year to the same stream and howls a long cry as if he's calling to a friend. Oh, hey, I needed some ideas for my vacation, so I picked up this book 
called Swimming to Antarctica by Lynn Cox. And as you can see, I got really inspired until I found out that the water around Antarctica is about 32 degrees. That's not a mistake. Lynn Cox swims in killer cold water because, well, she likes it. I'm not kidding, watch. And think about this. What motivates people to push themselves to accomplish difficult goals? I think I'll go somewhere warm this year. Deep Freeze. No place on Earth is colder than Antarctica, a continent surrounded by icebergs and frigid waters. Great place to go for a swim? If you're a penguin or a seal, maybe. But what if you're a person? You'd have to be crazy. Or you'd have to be Lynn Cox, who wants to be the first human to swim a mile in these waters. Lynn's been a champion long distance swimmer since the age of 14. But her special talent is withstanding ice cold water temperatures that would kill the rest of us in a matter of minutes. Normally, when people plunge into frigid waters, like the guy in this test, their body temperature also plunges so fast that they can drop dead. But somehow, Lynn stays alive and kicking. Sure, it helps that she trains intensely and puts on weight for extra insulation. Still, scientists can't figure out how she keeps her body temperature stable. All they know is, she's the only woman in the world who can. But can she handle the coldest waters on Earth? Ice, Lynn, ice! You okay? As she takes a test swim just north of Antarctica, even Lynn's worried about what might happen. I'm not sure I can do it. This water feels like slush. It takes a long time for her team to warm her up afterwards. Get the jacket up, Cornberry. And her feet may never recover. But only two days later, Lynn's dropped off the Antarctic coast and going for it. She starts off okay, but after half a mile, she's in trouble and looking for shore. What shore? Right here. Just as her nervous team is about to fish her out, they hear a strange sound. Laughing? You are, honey. Yep, Lynn's back and burning through the ocean. After 25 minutes in 32 degree water, she's not only reached her goal, but gone an extra quarter of a mile. Even the penguins are impressed. Back on the boat, after the fiercest feat of her life, Lynn has a new goal. Hot shower? Add a group hug and she'll be back to room temperature in no time. Hot winter. <laughs> It's hard to believe, but there are places in this world that no one's ever seen, like under my bed, for instance. No, seriously, I'm talking about forests and trees and mountains and beautiful places that are totally untouched and unspoiled. The adventurer in our next video wants them to stay that way, and he doesn't mind risking his life to make his point. Would you put yourself in danger for something you believed in? Meet Pablo Sandor. Man with a Mission. Deep inside the Chilean rainforest in South America is a two million acre wilderness that's untouched by the modern world. In the center of it all, high up on a mountain, is a clear lake that you won't be able to find on any map because there's no easy way to get to it, unless you've got wings. But that doesn't mean Pablo Sandor isn't going to try. Because this Mission Impossible is a real mission for Pablo. He's dedicated his life to exploring and writing about the endangered wilderness. He wants to save this land from developers who would cut down the trees, dig up the land, and turn this into this. Making it to that lake is the first step. Pablo and his group of eco-explorers will have to ride rough river rapids in kayaks, snake their way through the jungle, 
slog through swamps, survive breakfast instantly, and scramble up slippery slopes in the rain, which is hard enough to say, let alone do. On every leg of the journey, they're in danger of snapping a leg, or an ankle, or an arm, poking an eye out, or dropping 80 feet to their death. Yikes! But all that snaking, slogging, and scrambling pays off, and they're just about to reach their goal. There's our world. Yeah. Not so fast, Pablo. You still have to make it up that mountain, which is covered by a vertical forest, kind of like a regular forest turned on its side. You don't have to carry ropes for that. That's the nice part. The bad part is that some branches are rotten. Oops. They have to go up a granite stream bed instead. But they finally make it to the top. And what do you do after an impossible journey to an unreachable place? Let's go swimming. Whoa, this Whoa. feels great. Pablo's little adventure made a big splash. His efforts to tell people about this forest helped convince the government of Chile to preserve the land as a national park. Now, no one can spoil the beautiful view. Some people like adventure so much that they're willing to be really, really uncomfortable. As in, very, very cold. It makes me shiver just to think about Gus McCloud flying to the North Pole in an open plane with no heat and then writing a book about it. Solo to the top of the world. Well, he probably wrote the book in a warm room. So think about where in the world you would like to go and write about it afterwards. Anyway, bundle up for the next video. <laughs> On top of the world. What makes a 45-year-old businessman leave his nice, comfortable life and attempt to fly to the North Pole? I just like adventure. This is a good adventure. Depends what you mean by good. For Gus McLeod, it means a two-week, 3,500-mile journey through sub-zero winds and blinding snowstorms in a 61-year-old plane with an open cockpit. Today's flight's gonna be a little chilly. Now that's gotta be good, good, good. Gus is following in the footsteps of some of the legendary flyers of the past, like polar explorer Admiral Richard Byrd. He claimed to be the first to fly over the pole in 1926. The day I resolved to take an open cockpit airplane to the geographic North Pole and bring it back in one piece. So off he went in April of 2000, leaving from his home in Maryland and headed for the top of the world. There would be many stops along the way. Some were planned for food, for fuel, even a little bit of fun. Wow, oh, gotta get inside. And some were not planned, like pit stops for repairs on Gus's old plane. When the going gets tough, tough use duct tape. And Gus faced even bigger challenges, bad weather and the insane cold. Would he and his plane be able to survive temperatures of nearly 50 degrees below zero? The only thing I can feel is numb. My feet hurt, my hands hurt, my whole body aches. I can't even shiver, it's so cold. Numb or not, on the 13th day of his journey, Gus was finally within reach of the pole. The weather was clear and he went for it. It's now or never, I've got to go. But with 200 miles to go and a mountain range in his path, he started to run out of gas. There's no place to land. If I go down here, it's certain death. But he has to land on the frozen ocean. I've never done this before. Textbook perfect, three-pointer right on the numbers. One final refueling and Gus is set to try it again. Please don't fail me now. And after flying all day, he makes it to the top of the world, taking a victory lap around the North Pole. Now that's a good adventure. Ready for a new adventure? You've finished this topic and you can move on to another one.